Hello guys, I hope you're all doing okay and staying safe and self-isolating during this crisis. We're a fair way into it now, aren't we? What is it, 30 days or so? Um, but this video is a combination of some footage that we took a number of months ago and um, just recently. This is Friday today, for example, and the video will publish today, which should be Sunday by the time that you see this. So old and new uh, in some respects and old technology and new technology in other respects. So as you may or may not know, the Norton Manxman had a pretty rare exhaust system. Uh, it, obviously four pieces, two header pipes or exhausts and two mufflers or silencers at the rear. Um, the header pipes were different in that they have a kink in them. And the reason for the kink is that on the timing side specifically, there's a rev counter or a tachometer drive a gear uh, that comes out of the timing case. And the cable needs to pass around the header pipe and up to the instrument at the handlebars. Well, that was a pretty rare header pipe. And you see on a lot of the bikes that the guys have just gone for Atlas pipes or Dominator pipes because they're pretty rare to get hold of. And then at the rear end of the bike, um, the silencers or the mufflers, I believe they were made by hand at Bracebridge Street, at the original Norton Works. And so what's very distinct about them is they have the seam horizontally that's facing outwards, not at the bottom, not at the back, not hidden, but there for everyone to see as well. So it's really quite unique. It looks different to the Atlas exhaust pipe. And um, I've been extremely fortunate in getting hold of a set of pipes. Uh, they're on loan, I, I haven't got them myself, but I'd like to thank my good friend Sam for loaning me these pipes, and I thought you might like to see what they look like. So here, first of all, we have the header pipe. Um, looks like a regular pipe, except if you see here, I'm hoping that you can see that, there's a kink right here. So it comes out, of the exhaust port on the head, on the barrel, and then you'll see it sweeps in here. This is an important bend. This is the bend that allows the rev counter cable to pass around it and then up to the handlebars. So my friend Sam has loaned me a set of pipes. Uh, here's the corresponding primary side pipe as well. And Hope you can see that as well. Kink is there, not as noticeable, um, but nevertheless, it's there. These are raw pipes from his Manxman, and uh, he's obviously needing to hold on to these, but he's ever so kindly loaned me these pipes so that I can see um, how we can perhaps replicate them here in Portland, Oregon. So that's the header pipe. And then, uh, more significantly, he's loaned me this as well. He's loaned me an exhaust system. So this is the uh, very rare, elusive Manxman silencer or muffler. And as you can see, it, it weighs a ton. I mean, it's really heavy and it's obviously held on just by the clamp here and this little uh, bolt hole here for the hanger. Um, as you can see, it's uh, seamed uh, horizontally here and here as well. I'll do some close-ups and then my understanding is that the neck has been brazed or welded on afterwards prior to chroming as well. And then there's the rear section as well. And one of these has got kind of a bent hanger, as you can see, I think it's this one, yeah. Um, but it's uh, an unusual uh, silencer, isn't it? And I've got the other one as well. This one's a little banged up here. It's a mirror of the other one. And so here we have the other exhaust. And so they're heavy, I'm out of breath. <laughs> so I'll do a quick close-up of these as well. But um, the, the next part of this story is quite interesting. What I decided to do is try and figure out how we can get these, this exhaust system reproduced, replicated or cloned. I think the header pipes will be um, relatively straightforward compared to the silencers, obviously. 
And so, um, working with my friend Dave, Swoosh Dave, we found this amazing place downtown Portland, right on our doorstep, called Dependable Pattern Works. And so Dave and I went down to meet the team there, um, met specifically with Steve and Carl, and we had the pipes and the silencers scanned, 3D scanned. So it's just an amazing process. I, I hope you'll enjoy this video. Uh, I did take the liberty of asking Carl a, a bit about his company. It's a pretty old company, especially for the USA and particularly for Portland, Oregon. Um, and so uh, this is a fascinating walk around his company and the, the, the factory. And, um, and then at the end of this video, you'll see this marvelous uh, 3D scanning process. Uh, what happens next is still open for discussion. I'm still trying to think about what we do with these um, IGES files or um, STL, stereolithography files, essentially CAD type files. I don't know a lot about it, but uh, how do we take these files is the question and turn them into a, a solid form through either 3D printing or through a manufacturing process that actually jumps straight to the final product. That's the next part of this quest, this journey as well. So uh, hope you'll enjoy this video. This was a bit of a long intro, but uh, take care of yourselves. Hope you're all doing okay. And um, I'll speak to you again soon, okay? See you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much Thank you. for all your help, you and Steve, with the project. Um, it's bringing some high tech to this Norton project as well. So, uh, sure. yeah, because you know, of course it's a 60s bike and you can see it, it's amazing. You can even see the imperfections and the hammer marks and the dents in the scanned product as well, which I'll show everyone mm -hmm. in a minute. But um, we just thought we'd just take this opportunity to ask you a little bit about your business here. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Right. Well, Dependable Pattern Works has been on this site since 1933 in Southeast Portland, and we specialize in pattern tooling for the cast metal industry. Patterns, molds, um, plastic, metal, everything you can imagine. We do CNC machining, 3D scanning, rapid prototyping, design, engineering, um, kind of an all-purpose job shop. Wow, amazing. Yeah. The full full gamut. Yeah, absolutely. We try to do it all. Yeah. yeah. I was amazed at your website actually. It really is an old company mm -hmm. for Portland. So it? the business started in 1933 and it began oh, wow. as supporting the war effort at the time oh. and started in the middle of the Great Depression and my grandfather Carl went on to purchase the business um, soon thereafter and uh, my father more or less grew up here. I more or less grew up here and oh, here we gosh. are in, in uh, 2020 still going strong. This business has clearly evolved with the times. That, you know, that's it, why you're still here, right? It because you've adapted. It has, yeah. Yeah, we generally. started as an old time, yeah. you know, uh, wood pattern shop making things by hand and then evolved into CNC machining and then um, uh, 3D printing, scanning, you know, we have to kind of Adapt with the times. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. Uh, we're going to take yeah. a little look sure. behind the door as well. There's yeah. obviously some proprietary stuff that we don't want to film, of course. You know, it's uh, sure. intellectual um, property, mm -hmm. so that's absolutely fine. But sure. uh, yeah, we'll just take a little walk through. Right. No problem. I believe that was our first machine tool that we purchased, I think, in the early 1980s. latest purchase, although it's been several years now. That's a five-axis <laughs> machine tool, as opposed to being three-axis like the rest of these machines in here, you know, X, Y, Z, just, I guess, think of it as all linear movements. This has a, a rotating table that can go all different directions, oh, I guess, in layman's terms. Yeah. yeah. of the block and we kind of added on over the years. So are they used for making forms or are they finished goods? Um, both, 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 yeah. So kind of back in the day when we were doing a lot of, of uh, wood tooling up here, you know, we'd start with perfect plank. We'd, you know, a 
lot of times by hand, right. make a pattern out of, out of wood. Sure. Um, now a lot of it is like this this job here, we're gonna cut this into squares and put it into CNC machines down there and machine out uh, uh, nest on fixtures. As, as it sat in 1933. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we kind of do it all up here. It's incredible how things have evolved. At the moment. There's a smell and a feel to it. Uh huh. It's yep. The floors yep. are fabulous, aren't they? You know. Yeah. It's basically got a drum with uh, blades the on the top there. And oh yeah. It feeds that material up through the canister up to a head, and it liquefies it and lays it layers of the plastic down. Now, what plastic are you using here? Th this is nylon. So we got that in the late nineties. That really was kind of when 3D printing was in its infancy, at least in mainstream. And it's called the LOM 1015 Laminated Object Manufacturing. It had a roll of paper that would be mounted to a spool, come up over a table, and terminate at another roller there. And the table would raise up. A hot roller would roll over the paper oh, and had an adhesive on one side. Oh, I see. Stick it down, and then a laser would come and cut a 2D oh, section I of the see. part itself. And where it didn't have shape, it would make a cross hatch, a little cube, oh, cube oh. shape. And what you would end up with is like a wood like part. So this would basically be buried in there, like inside of a box. Yeah. And you would take that out with a hammer and you just. Oh. Knock those cubes away, and then you, oh, then you get that. I try to get enough scan data here on this side, and also this side, because mm -hmm. when I flip it over, I have to have some reference. So it's the more the better. So it's probably extra tricky on a tube, isn't it? There's not like a flat thing to reference. These, oh, especially, yeah. And so when I, I, uh, this is just a demo. Sure, so absolutely. We'll, we'll just see what happens here. And is your camera getting all that? I guess it is. It gets everything. That's the beauty of the 360. It gets everything. Let me turn the volume up. And, and maybe you can even see the screen. I don't know. It makes a distinctive sound. Geiger kind of sound. Oh, amazing. I don't know what it just did for this shiny or that one. Covered it. In my mind, I thought you went like inch by inch. I thought it would take, no, you know, hours for you to do this. Why it's why. Well, and, and, and one of the things that makes it easier is, is that this is, a, is not shiny, the muffler. I'll show you that too. We'll do a muffler. And then you just cut out the wooden blocks, then do you at the end of it? That's the art of it, though, isn't it? That's the time consuming. Yeah. The scanning actually goes pretty quick. Anyway, what happens next is I get rid of all that stuff. And there's oh amazing, and, and then you have to kind of kick around, and and it, in the next setup we'll see even more of it. Now, so again, the beauty on this one is we're not talking thousands of an inch either, and so you have a lot of leeway. And mm -hmm. that's what uh, the beauty of it uh, of having just done that muffler system be yeah. uh, previously is that. That's what they said. Right. They don't care about the holes in the scan data necessarily. They need general tube shape. Yes. And again, the first setup always is the one that's the most convenient. And then you come over here and you find out that you just created more work for yourself. <laughs> So you lay the two models together and then line them up that way? Yeah, the, uh, uh, the uh, software will do that. Well, there you go. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you sort of just go over it and fill in the, yeah, the, the, the gaps just, then? I'll have to just... And it might even take a third setup to get the... Okay, yeah. Because you've got enough hole there that, that 
problem. You need to you need to fix that. Is that the black then, Steve? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see. And there's still a, a block in there that you can see. Mm-hmm. So basically, that's what is involved. Let's see what that is. Actually, I think we would want to paint that. And what kind of printers do you guys have here? Uh, we have two Stratasys 400 MCs, FDM technology. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we still have one of the earliest. We, so we got into it in like the uh, late 90s. Mm-hmm. An LOM. We still right. have an LOM machine, if you believe in that. Um, it's not running. Yeah, it's collected dust. And then we got into the FDM. And I have two identical FDM machines. They've been workhorses. Oh, wow. Amazing. I remember when we put in a full body scanner at work because um, we were going to do athletes, right? Mm-hmm. And so it was a big four poster, and it was a they actually had to go through the ceiling for the post to get uh-huh. up, and then it had uh, scanners that went down. Yeah, those were something almost else. Ten years ago, probably. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty fun stuff to watch put in. There's probably a scan of me somewhere of that. <laughs> I would say I don't have to paint that. Yeah. Is it coming out okay? I think so. I think that'll scan up okay. That's brilliant. That's awesome though. It's incredible. Brings our hobby into the 21st <laughs> century anyway, doesn't it Dave? <laughs> and right now that isn't. Oh my gosh, have. look at that. An STL file, that's point data, of course. Um, and the more point data you put down, I would say those that exhaust system I just showed you mm-hmm. probably took a half hour to process. Right. So that's probably a 30 minute process, 20 yeah. to 30 minutes. Sure. One of the problems right now is we don't know who's going to make these, mm-hmm. and we don't know what their capabilities are. So, you know, they could be old school blacksmith almost, right? And mm-hmm. they're like, you know, they, they would need a something to, to copy physical model, and that's why we're thinking the 3D printed of that would mm-hmm. be ideal. Mm-hmm. Or they may be more advanced than, than the little, like, oh, STL would be great. Or yeah. Even an OB, you know, a it solid might works. be that you just need a, a center line curve in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so there we are. That's amazing. So the left and the right handed exhaust pipes. And then here's the muffler. Well, yeah, you see everything, don't you? That's scanned up well. That's terrific. Yeah. 